It's the summer of 2008 and COD 4 was released early in the year, and man, what a time it was to be alive. Oh, and the WWE had just won PG in July of 2008, a decision that to this day will still get fans riled up and have them writing whole ass paragraphs in the YouTube comments section. And the first WWE pay-per-view under the PG rating was going to be SummerSlam 2008. That itself makes this pay-per-view just fascinating. The two world title matches on this card, well, let's just say they weren't exactly going to tear the house down. It was CM Punk vs JBL and Triple H vs The Great Khali. But somehow, someway, this pay-per-view was still good and actually enjoyable. How you may ask? Well, storytelling. Yes, young whippersnapper, once upon a time in the WWE, storytelling was a thing. So no, we aren't gonna go over the entire card, every match, and every moment, because who the hell wants to sit there and listen to my dumbass talk about Mark Henry vs Matt Hardy? Nah, nah, nah. We're gonna talk about some good old-fashioned storytelling and what actually mattered on this card. And there are three things on this card that mattered. Three things on this card that made this show. Three things that people will still remember it to this day and three things that had me whiling out when I was a little kid when I was watching this live. So sit down son, Papa Wrestling Gifts is going to tell you some great stories from SummerSlam 2008. Chris Jericho vs Shawn Michaels is one of the greatest feuds of all time. If there was a wrestling school on booking and writing, which there should be because some of the writers that the WWE has right now might not be the brightest of the bunch, this feud should be studied. What I love about this feud is though there's so many layers. It isn't a simple I hate you feud that just started on a random episode of Raw and they just stretched out for many many pay per views for absolutely no reason. No no no, this feud began back all the way at WrestleMania 24 in a totally unrelated match. WrestleMania 24, Shawn Michaels had just retired Ric Flair, one of the most beloved wrestlers of all time in an all time classic match. Michaels showed so much guilt in the match, in and after on retiring Flair, saying I'm sorry, I love you, right before hitting the sweet chin music for the win. Which I don't know man, if you're gonna put me out of my misery and end my career, the last thing I wanna be told is that you love me. So after the match, Batista got angry at Shawn for retiring Rick, and they had a match at Backlash and no Jericho was the referee. In the match, it looked as if Shawn had injured his knee at one point. Jericho backs off Batista, who's about to hurt Sean even more and then Sean pops off and just hits him with the sweet chin music for the win. So Jericho thinks that he's faking the injury and calls him the best actor in all sports entertainment and eventually a match is announced for judgment day and Jericho actually apologizes to Michaels for saying that he's injured and he's like I believe you you're not injured I'm sorry. Michaels though then reveals that he's been lying the whole time and he wasn't injured and super kicks Jericho right in the face and gets a huge ovation. Shawn Michaels then would beat Jericho at Judgment Day and at this point they could have easily just ended this feud. Normally it would have been the end but luckily for us not here cause you know what we actually got some storytelling. A few weeks go by and Batista and Shawn have a rematch in which Batista just destroys Shawn Michaels. After the match Jericho calls out Michaels to his highlight reel, his talk show and he introduced him saying stuff like how he looked up to Michaels as a kid when he was a young wrestler and how he's proud to say that Shawn Michaels is a good friend of his and HBK comes out and Jericho brings up how he faked an injury and how he lied to him, how he lied to Batista and the people. You can literally see Jericho shift from the ha 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 happy go lucky Y2J highlight reel host to the condescending pissed off psycho right before your very eyes. So then Jericho asks HBK a question. How does Shawn Michaels, HBK, turn into such a lying, cheating, pathetic little worm? He clotheslines him and just starts destroying him. Michaels just gets banged in. He's on his knees and Jericho just looks at him and says, You started this. This is your fault. He grabs him by the head and just bashes it into the Jeritron 5000. In one of the greatest heel turns of all time, Michaels legit just looked like he just died. Jericho was acting like a man possessed. The iconic heel Jericho from 2008 to 2010 that everyone loved was born. Michaels had a horrible, horrible eye injury because of how he hit the screen, but that didn't stop him. Sean wanted a piece of Jericho regardless, so it was time. Jericho vs Sean at the Great American Bash. The match begins and it's a solid match, both men are getting some action, however, remember how I said Michael's eye was hurt badly? Well Jericho hit him with an elbow and ladies and gentlemen, the blood was flowing like it was Niagara Falls. And Jericho beat Michaels to a bloody pulp, it was disturbing, it was violent, it was amazing. Jericho absolutely destroyed him. Jericho becomes relentless with the eye punching it over and over again, it was actually disturbing. The referee calls the match off as without a doubt, Sean was unable to continue. Jericho showed a new side of viciousness we had never seen before in his entire career. This wasn't the same Y2J we grew up watching, this was a monster. 
This set up SummerSlam 2008. It wasn't going to be a match or anything. It wasn't going to be HBK vs Jericho. Oh no, Michaels had gotten banged in so bad that he was unable to wrestle at SummerSlam. Instead, we were going to get an announcement, which was teased to be the retirement of Shawn Michaels. Jericho beat him so badly that he was considering retirement. So here we were, SummerSlam 2008. So Shawn made his entrance with his wife Rebecca by his side. So he was in the ring and he started to thank everybody that had been supporting him during this difficult time. He talked about all the great moments that he's had and he said that the doctors have told him it's time to hang up the tights and right after the sunset before it gets more damage to his eye. Sean was 43 at this point, so this made it all more believable. Maybe he was retiring after all. And then of course, here comes Y2J. Jericho said no. Jericho wanted Shawn Michaels to tell his wife and his kids that the real reason he was retiring was because of Chris Jericho beat his ass. What a savage. And Michaels finally admits it, that he has to retire through the actions of a vile, selfish, worthless human being. He dares Jericho to go home and tell his family that daddy will never, ever be Shawn Michaels. So Michaels and Jericho have a stare down. Rebecca grabs Shawn's arm to leave, and when Shawn turned his back to leave, Jericho threw a punch, Michaels ducked, and boom, Jericho punched Rebecca straight in the face. Ladies and gentlemen, that punch hit like a prime Mike Tyson punch from 1988. Holy. Chris Jericho, after nearly making a man blind, forcing him to retire, just knocked out his wife. Wow. This moment was just iconic. Watching this live, it was like time stood still. One of those moments where you forget what the hell is even going on and you're just shook. You're surprised. This captivated the audience like no other. Rebecca looked like she was legit knocked out. Jericho got the hell out of the ring and HBK was in the ring and he was just hurt. You can see the pain in his eyes. There was Oscar level acting from everyone involved and honestly, I don't think it was acting because Rebecca looked like she legit got clapped. What a moment. This show that you don't have to have a match to have an amazing moment that people will remember. You don't need to have a match at every pay-per-view to further the storyline. The heat that this added to Jericho was insane, and he was already a white hot heel. This angle right here took an already personal angle between HBK and Jericho and took it to the next level. You're telling me that after this you wouldn't tune into Raw to see what was happening next? These two would go on to have one of the best feuds ever, and this was the key part. This is what everybody remembers. This is what put it into the next gear. What a moment. An all-time great SummerSlam moment, and it wasn't even a match. Ladies and gentlemen, it was just storytelling. Batista vs John Cena This match was every kid's dream at this point. If you were a kid during the Ruthless Aggression era, these were your guys. These two were the biggest faces, they were the stars. Both were the final two men in the 2005 Royal Rumble, and both men won their respective major titles at the same WrestleMania. These guys were the stars of Raw and SmackDown. Think of Raw and SmackDown between 2005 and 2008, good chance that these two are the first two you thought of. I was waiting for this match since 2005. Hell, even the SmackDown vs Raw 2006 cover had me begging for this match. I simulated this match countless times. These were the guys. Growing up during this time, everyone at school would wear a Batista shirt or a John Cena shirt. And now, for the first time ever, they were going at it. It was time. Six years in the making, they both started on the main roster in 2002. It took them three years to become main eventers, and then this match was set up three years after they were established as top guys. What I love about this feud is that it was a simple story, but it still had people captivated. You were either a Batista guy or a John Cena guy. It was an organic storyline that was built by itself the day that these two were the last two men in the Royal Rumble three years prior. Is this a five star classic that would have Dave Meltzer creaming his pants? No, cause first of all, it didn't take place in the Tokyo Dome, duh. But it's just fun. You got two huge, popular wrestlers, you have a hot crowd, and for 13 minutes they just went at it. What's the issue? Crowd was into every blow, every move, and they never lost interest. Since it wasn't some long ass 30 minute match, there was no wasted moves or emotions, no long periods of boring ass rest holds, they didn't do stuff like grab a headlock and hold it for 2 minutes in the middle of the ring for no reason, it was all about action. And that's what we wanted. This match wasn't supposed to be a technical masterpiece, it was a spectacle, it was fun, it was a moment, it was an event, and it worked because the crowd never lost interest. Even during the submissions that weren't even finishers, the crowd was still just screaming. Eventually, John hit him with the FU. Yes, kiddies, once upon a time, the AA was called the FU, and Batista kicked out, and the crowd was just shook because it was rare back then when somebody kicked out of the FU. So Cena goes on the top rope and is about to do a leap, and bang, Batista out of nowhere, Batista bomb, one, two, and Cena kicked out. The crowd was legit shook. Batista was shook. I was shook. My mom was shook. It was insane. Batista just got more angry and hit him with one more Batista bomb. A vicious, vicious Batista bomb. 
and he finally got the pin and he beat John Cena clean in 2008. Nobody saw this coming. I know for a lot of older or younger heads this match doesn't mean anything to you, but for us, who I say were born between 95 and 2000, this match was everything for us. These were our top guys just going at it, a match we had been waiting for since 2005 and they put on a show. By the way, they would kayfabe use a Batista bomb counter to say Cena broke his neck, but in reality he didn't, it was already messed up and he was going to get surgery anyway. But man, this match was just fun, it was epic and it was action packed and the story was simple, but when you have such good stars, you know people want to see fight, it just works, you don't need a crazy storyline. Cough cough, Wrestlemania main event this year. I don't care what anyone says, I love this match and I was just so happy to see this match. From 2007 until 2008, there was one feud that every kid watched and there was one man that everyone hated. A generation despised this man like no other, the Rated R Superstar. Once again, if you were a kid watching during this time, it was hard to find someone you hated more than Edge, the ultimate opportunist, the great antagonist of this era. His feuds with Cena and Batista and of course The Undertaker were just so memorable. And this was the grand climax of the ultimate heel Edge. Of course, Edge would come back and still be a heel in the end of 2008 and most of 2009, but this match ended the OG run that had every single kid who watched SmackDown from 2007 to 2008 to just despise Edge. He was legit the most hated wrestler in the company. And what better way to end it than in a match that also ended one of the greatest rivalries of the 2000s, Edge vs The Undertaker. This feud was fire. Literally. Let me set the table for you. It all began more than a year before in 2007 when Edge cashed in his money in the bank on The Undertaker. The ultimate opportunist had struck. Undertaker would disappear and Edge would become the top heel in SmackDown and carry that show until July when eventually he got injured as well and was forced to drop the title. Months went by and during a Hell in a Cell match between Batista and Taker, Edge dressed up as a cameraman, interfered, and as Taker was about to win, he just destroyed him. He took that camera and bashed it in Taker's skull and just clapped him. Edge was back and better than ever. Shout out Eric Bischoff. He would then go on to beat Batista and Taker in a triple threat match at Armageddon in 2007 to become champion once again. Edge at this point was white hot and would go on to versus The Undertaker at Wrestlemania. It was Taker vs Edge for the World Heavyweight Championship at Wrestlemania and both men were undefeated at Wrestlemania and they put on a classic in one of the most underrated main events in Wrestlemania history. Undertaker got the best of Edge and he beat him with a Hell's Gate. So they had a rematch at Judgment Day. Taker won by count out and man Vicky Guerrero capitalized on the decision and vacated the title, citing a championship can not be won by a count out. Why did Vicky do this? Well see, she was Edge's lover, so the GM of SmackDown was of course going to hold it down for her lover, wouldn't you? And then the two went at it again at a one night stand in a TLC match, and the stipulation was if The Undertaker lost, he would have to leave the WWE. Edge shocked the road and with the help of La Familia, he banished the dead man. Edge was on top of the world, he had the GM on his side, he had the World Heavyweight Championship and he just banished The Undertaker. The villain had won, Thanos and Edge, the same thing. So Edge lost his title after CM Punk cashing his money in the bank. Oh and then the day Edge and Vicky were supposed to get married, well Triple H leaked the tape of Edge kissing Alicia Fox who was the wedding planner. And of course the wedding was off. So Edge lost his title and his girl, meaning he lost all his power. You guys know the MJ song, Billie Jean, where he goes, People always told me, be careful what you do, don't go around breaking young girls hearts. Well even though Vicky was far, far from young, oh man did Edge break her heart. And as a result, she wanted payback. And she wanted to see Edge get destroyed. And who else, who better to destroy him than the one person who might have hated Edge more than she did. She reinstated the Undertaker. Oh and to make it worse, it was going to be a Hell in a Cell match. The same match that Edge interfered in at Survivor Series 2007. But this time, there was no hiding dressed up as a cameraman. No, no, no. A story built for almost a year was going to end. Somebody was gonna get destroyed. Somebody gonna get hurt real bad. Man, there was nothing more hype than knowing Taker was about to put in work at a Hell in a Cell match. Just the way he would close the door, it was like, oh man, it's going down. And ladies and gentlemen, it went down. I love the story of this match. Edge was in uncharted territory, so his response was to turn the Hell in a Cell match into a TLC match. It was genius. Plus, he just beat the Taker in TLC match a few months ago. These two always brought out the best in each other in every single match they had, and this was no different. This is one of my favorite feuds of all time. It was the first PG Hell in a Cell, and man, you wouldn't have noticed as they went at it. Sure, there wasn't any blood, but this show, you don't need blood to have a classic Hell in a Cell match. They had chemistry, they had a great feud, and they just killed each other. Edge at one point speared Taker so hard against the Cell wall that the wall fell. 
leading them to fight on the outside, which led to a spear on top of the announce tables. It was just amazing, it was fun, the crowd was into it, it was lit. This is why I don't think Hell in a Cell should be a pay per view, save it for feuds that need it. There's only one way for this feud to end, in a Hell in a Cell match. This feud deserved it. It didn't just get a Hell in a Cell match because it turned out to be the pay per view of the month. No, they deserved it and they needed it. The crowd was so hot and Edge tried everything but it just didn't work. This is how you end a feud. So Edge went for the old school to mock the Taker only for Taker to counter and choke slam him through tables. And then Taker went on to do everything to Edge that Edge did to him. So he hit Edge with a counter just like how Edge hit him last year. He then speared Edge, and then he took a chair and did a concerto to Edge. Karma came knocking and Taker destroyed him and he won the match. What a way to end a feud and what a way to have a Hell in a Cell. This is a classic Hell in a Cell match in my opinion. Is it the best of all time? No, but it's definitely up there. This match should definitely be talked about more. This match was just fire. At the end of the match, Taker won and he was leaving, but no. After everything Edge did to him, he had to go back and destroy him for good. Taker went back into the ring and legit choke slammed Edge off a ladder so hard that the ring broke. Of course it was a gimmicked ring, but holy was it fire. Wait, did I just say fire? He signaled for fire, and ladies and gentlemen, fire came. So the story was that Edge was burning in hell in a cell. So literally every kid watching this point thought Edge was dead. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how you end a feud. That's storytelling. That's something fans waited months to see and they finally got it. What a match, what a moment, what a show. Now, is this the best SummerSlam ever? No, I'm not trying to say that. It had some average matches, it had some boring title matches that didn't mean anything, so I'm not saying it's the best, but at the end of the day, it was damn enjoyable, and it showed how the WWE, when they try to create engaging stories, they can. It's just that they forget sometimes that stories are important. This pay-per-view means a lot to my generation. We finally had to see Batista vs Cena, and one of the most important feuds of a generation came to a close. HBK and Jericho's storyline got 10,000 times more intense here, and this show's angle is what made that rivalry so special and memorable. So is it the best SummerSlam of all time or anything? No, but I'm not saying that. It was just fun and it was enjoyable. So definitely go check this out.